Oh yeah, that's right, baby. Styling and profile. Ric Flair, 1985. No, just kidding, guys. B Junior's Movie Cave, Endurance Productions YouTube channel. Thank you for coming back, checking out the vids. Going to do the now time-honored tradition of the ceremonial recap video from the Mad Monster Party Convention, Horror and Pop Culture Convention that was held in Charlotte, North Carolina, 2015, the year of our Lord. Just going to uh, go through all the stuff here. Just let me say preliminary, good time had by all. I was there for a day this year. I didn't stay the whole weekend. A little strapped for cash, even though I blew my budget. I'll get into that more later. But I had a great time, if only for a day. Got to meet up with some uh, YouTubers that I've known for a long time. Pizzell, um, Tim McNutt, Garrett from WrestleManiacs. Had a really good time hanging out with those dudes. And blanket uh, disclaimer here, any of my photos from the trip, they're all on the B-Juniors Movie Cave Facebook page. Link over to that. Check it out. Check it out. It's not going to be on this video. I'm lazy. I'm not doing titles or add-ons or any of that crap and editing. I'm just getting it out there and letting you guys see it today. So, very good. Uh, didn't have a bad thing to say about this one at all. I just went on the busy day, so I kind of expected it was going to be busy. Some, they had some lines to some celebs, but they weren't like horrendous. They were only like 10 strong or something like that. Um, but you, on Saturday, you don't get to make, we can make a whole lot of small talk with the celeb guests and all that. Anyway, you really can't get a chance to go to the Q and a panels. You can ask them questions during that if you want to, and really kind of engage them a little bit better anyway, and kind of sit down and relax and hear what they have to say about the movies they were in. Yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, like I said, didn't have a bad experience at all with any celeb guests, but I really went most importantly just to see friends this year. I wanted to see some buds that I'd saw on YouTube for years and uh, really kind of form some friendships with. That's what's important to me anymore. And also the vendor hall. Vendor hall has just become my mecca. It's where I like to go and find these little items that you just can't get any just anywhere at any time, any, like a Walmart or somewhere. So made a good few passes through the, uh, the vendor hall. Um, as I said before, the money was flying fast and furious this year. It was a little more expensive around the edges for B. Junior's budget this year. but. Uh, one of those things that comes once a year. It's a little funny story before I get too too deep into the hall here. Um, I'm not sure Pizzell will talk about it in his video, but uh, uh, he and Garrett, to their credit, didn't really laugh at me too hard. But I thought for sure I was pickpocketed or my cash was lifted after the Q&A we went to see. And I'll tell you about those later after the hall. But uh, I thought for sure somebody lifted $40 plus out of my pocket while we were in that, that Q&A or whatever. I bought a ticket at the door, $35. I told you it's a little more expensive this time around, $35, and I bought a Blu-ray on my way in. There you go. So the month, I had to go back, hit the machine. I blew my budget out real quick, so I had, uh, had to throw a little extra dollars into this trip, but I don't feel like I got really taken away, taken to the cleaners. But Let's dive right in the hall. I'll show you guys the hall, then I'll go over the Q&A experiences, that kind of thing. Um, it is customary for them to do a uh, trifold. They had a booklet the first year I went. They Luckily, though, they still do the trifold, and you get the, the map. That's what I like about Mad Monster Party. It's laid out a little bit like Scarefest, where you have plenty of room to move around in most cases, but uh, they give you a map, let you know exactly where everything's at. Um, they still get an A for organization, or maybe an A minus. A to an A minus for organization. Um, this is not really their fault, but just Saturdays are more busy. It's hard to get around the main floors, but uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Not the not the most cramped one I've ever been to. <laughs> Friday night field fest. <laughs> Pardon me. Didn't, didn't say nothing there. Just uh, but anyway. Uh, yeah. Little trifold 2015. Got the pinhead uh, Google there. Uh, got some little freebie ads here. I'll have to give a little shout out. Uh, spooky school stories. Uh, spooky children's books. Yeah, check them out. Google them. Can't do everything for you guys. Mid-Atlantic Wrestling Legends Fan Fest. Yeah, I brought this back just for whatever, because WrestleMania was last night, man. You have to forgive me. Still in wrestling mode. Get the honky-tonk man there. Also, this little kid was running through the aisles giving these out. It says a, a poster in here. I'm not going to fold it out because it's not really, yeah, it's just a freebie. But there's, that's just proving my point. There's always going to be freebies at these things. You just have to be mindful about that. Uh, I had a couple of my independent uh, filmmaker buds slip me some DVDs this trip. Uh, Strebo from Mutantville.com slipped me a, a, an official DVD of Tales from Mutantville, uh, Mutantville production, independent horror being made in North Carolina. Check them out. Check out the website, Mutantville.com. 
Uh, but I'm going to do a review on this uh, probably in the near future and do that. And I also had the human virus slip to me. Uh, it's a virus, uh, let's see, psychotic camper movie made in the Appalachian Mountains, I think, of North Carolina or thereabouts. Haven't watched it yet, so don't quote me on that. Not rated. 90 minutes. Going to check it out. Pretty cool stuff. I like some independent stuff. I like checking out the new stuff. Got to check out what's out there. I uh, picked up one Blu-ray this trip. I got uh, Jess Franco's Bloody Moon. I'm about halfway through watching it. Probably going to do a review on this one as well. This is from the Severn table. Pretty cool stuff. Look at that gruesome stuff there. I think this is Jess Franco's only slasher film he ever made. Now, don't quote me on that. I'm not a big Jess Franco fan. I just know of his films. I've seen some of them here and there. Got a few in the collection, but uh, yeah. Bloody Moon. Pick that up. Toys. You got to get some toys. Where I mean, I'm not really getting full force back into action figures, but some of my YouTube buds have, have kind of sparked the interest again. You know, recently I did an unboxing for these for this reaction figure of Snake Plissken from Escape from New York. Um, I figured, why stop there? These reaction figures were all over the place. This, they must be taking setting the world on fire, man. They must be. Uh, you know, reaction figures must be running wild, brother. They must be running wild. But, uh, yeah, they had the uh, one that just caught my eye that I had to have was the Jack Burton Big Trouble Little China action figure. Yeah, look at that. It's like G.I. Joe's back in the day. Little four-inch figures. Got his submachine gun there. His mullet rocking 80s style. Yeah, check it, dudes. Pretty cool. Retain the cover art there. You can collect them all. Collect them all. Isn't that cool? But you can't stop there. You can't have the hero without the villain. That's right, guys. Low pan. That's right. They actually had a low pan. A little side view there. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, man. Check it out. Jack Burton and low pan. I mean, all I need now is three storms to go with it. Thunder, lightning, and rain. Maybe the chick, the damsel in distress, in distress there. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not really big in action figures, but there's just some that you have to have in your collection. Jack Burton, hey, John Carpenter, goodness, man, you gotta have it. Put him down there, Snake Plissken, let them hang out together. Yeah. I'm a big kid, I know. All right, guys, autographs. I got more autographs this time than I set out to do. I was only budgeting myself for about two, maybe three autographs, depending on the pricing. I ended up coming away with like six. I mean, it's, it's really weird. But not on a whole lot of different stuff. You know all those DVDs I did in my little preparations video? I didn't get any of them signed after putting them all in. I'm only doing DVDs this year. I'm not doing that poster thing anymore. I took two down off the wall and got them signed. Got, got some upgrades done to some uh, other stuff. Um, let's go with uh, the first one here. I met Dick Warlock, who, of course, played Michael Myers in the original Halloween 2. And endless numbers of stunt doubling for Kurt Russell in Escape from New York. And just, he is a long time old school stunt man, very nice man to meet, very a, a prankster, very a joking man. He, he loves a good joke. I, I really enjoyed his uh, candor and his, uh, just the way he carried himself. He's not getting up there in years a little bit, but he's, he's an older gentleman, but he's a really funny guy, which played into my autograph. Well, let me show you this first. I got my mini print of uh, Halloween 2. It's already been signed by Pamela Susan Shoup up there towards the top. I'm about to throw it into the camera. Right there. Up here, Nurse Karen in the film. Who, if you know who I'm talking about, the hot tub scene. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, guys? Dick Warlock. Yeah, got to, got to enjoy the whole... Yeah, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Anyway, he wrote, To Pamela, Dick Warlock, H2. Now, I didn't tell him to do that. I've got this bad habit of always saying, just write what you want. You know? And he, he looked up there and he saw that Pamela Susan Shoup had signed this first. And he said, he goes, oh, Pamela, my God, there's a woman. Or something like that. And he goes... I got to write to Pamela. You bring up too many memories, kid. I said, write what you want. He put to Pamela. So he's like, he's writing to Pamela on the autograph. Now to some people, that's probably like, dude, that's stupid, man. Why did you do that? That's because these are the memories, guys. I'm not going to get rid of these autographs. These are from me. Just my man, my, just my man, Keith. You can't take this crap with you. I'm not going to sell this crap. It's the memories. It's the stories. That's why, you know, I do it that way. Pretty cool, guys. Pretty cool, guys. Anyway, Dick Warlock, prankster of an old man. He's a pretty cool dude. All right. They had a Leatherface, a uh, small Leatherface reunion. They had uh, Gunnar Hansen, the original Leatherface from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Mr. Bill Johnson, who played primarily uh, Leatherface in Part 2, Texas Chainsaw 2. He was in attendance. I got him to sign my mini poster of 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. It was previously signed by Bill Mosley there. That's my sweet meat. Chop Top himself. Now I've got Leatherface. We've got To Barry, the Saw of the Saw's family, Bill Johnson, Leatherface. Needs a little arrow over to part two there. Pretty cool stuff, guys. Give you a little shot of it there. It's good. It's growing. It's growing. You never know. You might get a... Uh, Tom Savini was there. He did the special effects for this film. Give you a little epic view of it there. Yeah, yeah. Check it. Check it out. He was there, and he was doing autographs. I've got Tom Savini on a couple things, so I thought I'd spread my autographs around to people that probably don't do a whole lot of conventions so forth, so... Which comes into play on the next poster here. But Bill Johnson, I love Texas Chainsaw 2. Not as much as part one, but it's it's definitely an 80s favorite of mine. Got had to upgrade it a little bit. Um just before I get into my Fright Night poster, there was a Fright Night cast reunion. It was a bigger cast reunion than I thought. They had uh Billy Cole, uh Jerry Danders, the vampire's ghoul helper in the movie. And also, they had Art Evans, the, the African-American cop that was in the movie. He, he was on the movie for like a day and shows up for like a minute in the film. Also, they had the special effects guy, Steve Johnson, who did special effects for the movie there as well. Evil Ed, Amy, and Charlie Brewster. All three of those, and Chris Sarandon, Jerry the Vampire, the whole cast, the whole living cast, I would say, main cast was there. So, This is what I got signed a few years ago at uh, one of the conventions in Kentucky. I got Evil Ed, Stephen Jeffries, he was there by himself. So I didn't get him to sign my poster over here because I just didn't want to double up. And I know it's kind of cheesy to have them separated, but I had I had to spread around the money and make decisions. That's just the way it goes. But I upgraded my Fright Night poster. There's Evil Ed on the DVD. So I got the rest of the cast pretty much on the poster here. Check it out. This is from a couple years ago at Mad Monster, and this is where I learned my lesson about silver sharpies. Thank you, Chris Sarandon. But he says to Barry, Chris Sarandon, welcome to Fright Night for real, Jerry Dandridge. Uh, the new ones are Tuberry, uh, William Ragsdale, who played Charlie Brewster in the film. And also, this is a really interesting guy. Tuberry, Jonathan Stark, Hey Kid, Billy. Uh, played Billy Cole. Now, he also plays Charlie uh, in House 2, which is another cult favorite of mine. I had my House 2 DVD, but I was running out of money. Money was flying fast and furious. And I couldn't afford to get multiple things signed. So, just did what I could, guys. And probably the most, the one that was the most fun to me. And most personable was Amanda Beers. You know, it was Amy from Fright Night and Marcy on Married with Children. A whole bunch of stuff she's done. But uh, she writes, To Barry, Don't You Want Me Anymore? Amanda Beers, Amy. So there you go. A little money shot for you there. The, uh, the main cast is pretty much done for the Fright Night autograph collection there. I don't know. I might make something out of this one day. Put like this on a front shelf. On a, I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. You can only put so many autographs on these items anyway without them looking so overbunched or whatever. But yeah, anyway, Fright Night, favorite vampire film of all time. Right up there with Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot was just the first one I ever watched, but Fright Night, pound for pound, my favorite vampire film. It's just one, one of the ones I grew up with. And a lot of people say go with the classics, but Fright Night's the one for me, guys. Guys, that's the haul. That is all the autographs. That's the swag. That's everything that I got. A word on what I did while I was there. Of course, met up with Fizzell and Garrett. Spent a lot of time with them. I had a good lunch with uh, Fizzell's better half and himself and Garrett. We talked wrestling, predictions, uh, Miami Connection notes, you know, on the cult classic of Miami Connection. We talked about that. Just movie junk in general and, more importantly, just shared time. That's what these, these, these conventions are for, for me anymore. It's just to share time, experience good time with good folks, good people, good company. Um, that have a common interest in horror and pop culture movies in general, uh, which is one of the reasons why I still do the, the, uh, the Sausage Factory with the guys on that, too. Check that out. One, the Sausage Factory. Selfish plug there. Go check it out, guys. Um, yeah, got to meet up with Tim McNutt in Florida. Uh, really cool guy. Uh, he's got his camera with him all the time. He's ready to shoot. Um, just, I, don't, I mean, so many people I ran into. Mike Horrible from, uh, you know, from the Facebook uh, arena there. A whole lot of people I've, I've known for a while via Facebook and or uh, and or YouTube got to meet them and or hang out with them. So it was pretty cool. That's why I do these things primarily. Hit the vendor hall fast and furious. I didn't buy a whole lot from the vendor hall. I was looking for a leather face mask this year, but they got a few options online that I could probably go and do. So don't feel like I'm no big whoop. But uh, just the experience of going through all that stuff that you just can't readily buy, even at a Halloween store when the season comes up there's just not those it's not the same 
Um, Q and A's hit two main hit the butt end of a William Forsyth Q and A where he was talking about separating acting from real life. Really in depth kind of character. Really in depth character actor that man is. A lot of respect for William Forsyth. Didn't meet him, but I walked past the table a few times and just kind of listened to him talking to people. That's what's great about these things too, guys. You don't have to buy a single thing from these tables. You can walk over, extend the hand, hearty handshake, and just tell them you enjoy their role in a certain movie or whatever. Interact with them. You can do that. Especially on Fridays. That's the best autograph day or celeb day because everybody's fresh. They haven't been up all night goofing around or boozing or anything. So Sunday's usually your, your best day to hit the vendor hall because a lot of the vendors are cutting prices back a little bit because they don't want to bring a lot of swag back home. So it's for them to carry back. So sometimes you get a deal. Um, the other Q&As I went to, of course, was the Friday night panel. Uh, the whole cast there learned some stories about uh, the 80s, cocaine, and uh, a very weird story from Stephen Johnson, the effects man. He went on, He went into detail about how he had to do an 18-hour stint on some evil Ed makeup with the Wolfman transformation or whatever, or the wolf transformation on him. Uh, he had to extend his hours because one of his main assistants didn't show up due to being all coked up in a cocaine rage or a cocaine haze. And then, after we all just kind of had a half chuckle about the funny story about the drug use, and then he went home and blew his brains out. And I was like, uh... And then we were all kind of like... It went silent. We were all like, uh, did he just say what he just said? But yes, these are the interesting stories that you learn about behind the scenes. And thankfully, Amanda Bierce and uh, William Ragsdale and Chris Sarandon, they all kind of kept it lively thereafter because I think they all kind of felt... I'm just going to go out on a limb and say... Everybody was kind of like, uh, wait a minute. Did Mr. Johnson just say what he said? Yeah. A little, little strange. A little strange. I'm not going to say... It wasn't interesting. It was a little strange. But uh, beyond that, uh, good information about the, you know, like the cop, you know, Art Evans that was there. I didn't get his autograph or anything, but he gave kind of his insight on outside looking in. These other people were in the movie for the whole time, and he showed up for his day of work, his page and a half of work, and he was just kind of there having a good time to be. He's like, man, you guys are scary. You guys are scaring me with all this horror stuff, you know. So there's all that kind of stuff that comes into play with Q&As. That's why I like to make time to go to a couple of those because you get the inside dope that you don't get in the Talking Heads press junket that's on the DVDs and stuff. Not unless it's usually like red shirt pictures where you get the inside dope on stuff that you want to know uh, from Michael Felcher's company. I always plug his stuff because it's pretty cool. Um, but uh, they also had a, a, a Q&A panel with the Leatherface panel with uh, Gunnar Hansen and Bill Johnson, TCM 1 and 2. Um very, very informative. My boy Pizzell asked a question that he, uh, from a story that he got from Ed Neal past the uh, convention about the uh, medicinal or the marijuana brownie uh, fiasco that happened on that's kind of, it's kind of talked about behind the scenes during conventions and stuff, but nobody really knew the inside dope. So my boy Pizzell, true five-star general status, got up there and asked him about it if there was any validity to it. And that's what I love about Gunnar Hansen. He talks to you just like you, you're sitting in a backyard cookout or something. He just kind of says, well, it just kind of goes into it. The, the caterer brought those over, and people were hungry throughout the day. Well, there wasn't much left over to snack on but the brownies, so it wasn't just Gunnar that ate them all. It was basically the whole Gunnar plus the crew and other cast members that were munching on these marijuana brownies. So basically they were just out of their minds stoned during this whole try, trying to film it, and Toby Hooper just got really mad that day yeah, hijinks ensued, but that's what everybody was laughing and clapping. Yeah, it, they're out there getting stoned in the middle of making Texas Chainsaw Massacre. To some, it's probably like, dude, that's drug use. Yes, I know. But don't be a prude, guys. It's a funny story. It's just those are the things that the memories that I take away from these these conventions that I enjoy, you know, that I go for. Q and A's are free, man. Past the ticket price, you can go to those. Those are the things I tell people. Don't just stop at spending money. I mean, don't, you don't have to spend money in the vendor hall. You don't have to go and meet it. You can, or you don't have to buy an autograph. You can go and meet these people. You can go listen to their stories. You can ask them questions. You can go to after parties, or you can see them. I think there was a couple of guys like Mike Corbell on Facebook. He got a picture of William Forsyth eating breakfast. You know, just kind of hanging out. There was a, a convention. That I think it was the year before last, Charlotte, the one I went to. Um, Gunnar Hansen was there and he was uh, eating breakfast and just hanging out with the folks and we were all just kind of eating breakfast and everybody was just saying hello to him you know not trying to bother him but he was engaging with everybody just to have somebody to talk to and that's another thing I like about Gunnar Hansen he's 
he's forthcoming with why he does these conventions. He's not like some of these other screwballs that change your prices all the time. Didn't see a whole lot of that going on this time. The prices were a little bit higher than I expected, but once a year kind of uh, reasoning kicked in. But Gunnar Hansen will tell you first then. He'll say, hey, look, I'm semi-retired. I'm a semi-retired rider. I do this to supplement my retirement. He'll just tell, tell you straight out that he said, I wasn't charged, but that's the reason why I do it. Plus, I have to fit the bill for some of the travel and stuff like that. I like that bit of honesty. I don't like like it whenever you hear these stories about certain celebs that ruin it for everybody else that are changing their prices based on what people are wearing that day. See, look, I'm wearing my work clothes right now. Yeah, this is probably going to be, well, I'm not going to say his name, but one guy from a couple conventions ago would probably said, yeah, charge this guy $50. He looks like he's got money. No, I just have to put on church clothes to go to work in because I have, I'm a, I have to I'm a work in a public place. I, when I go to conventions, I wear blue jeans and so forth. I'm not going to get off on a tangent there, but yeah. Not a whole lot of that going on. There, was, there were signs on most of their tables saying, okay, autograph $20, most of which would take a photo with you at the table. There again, my photos are on VJ's Movie Cave Facebook page. Um, if you want to look at them. I didn't get a photo with Dick Warlock or Bill Johnson. They were charging like an extra, I think a little extra amount for photos and or a photo op was separate or something. So I just didn't bother with that. I, didn't, I just talked to them a little bit. Got, you know, I took the pictures during the Q&A or something like that. So it's not a big deal. And like I said, I'm not an autograph dealer or nothing like that. I don't really care if I get a picture of them signing the thing or whatever. These autographs are just for me. It's a selfish thing. I like to put them on the wall, obviously, in the man cave. If you're having a brew, you're chilling out, or if you have a buddy over and you want a conversation piece, you can tell them about how Dick Warlock wrote Pamela and said, or explain the situation behind Lance Harrison using a paint pen, giving the intricate uh, drying time on it. See what I mean? There's all these little stories that I remember about these autographs. That's what makes it special. Okay, guys. That's it. That's all I can say about the convention. Great time. Good times. Yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Leave your questions, comments below. There's going to be more videos coming out on the cave soon. Um, I'm going to be wrapping up those Q&A videos. I know it's been a while, but I got kind of busy with other things. But I am. It is my goal to get those done. Plus, there's going to be more random reviews coming out. I found a few other good old, goldy, crusty cult classics of randomness that I want to throw on that series. So more videos are sure to come. Especially on those days when I get out there, get off the lawnmower, and I need something to do. So, getting that time of year. Rock on, dudes. Catch you next time. Bye.